So let's continue our discussion on op-amp circuit analysis with a voltage follower, also known as a buffer. First we have this circuit. We have VP and VN. And we have a source connected through the op-amp and then to the load. And what this voltage follower does, it isolates the source from the load. So let's look at the relationship between VO and VS. First, we note that there's no current going through IP, so therefore there's no voltage drop across RS because in an ideal op amp, IP is equal to IN, the current going through the inverting amplifier uh, input is equal to zero and that's a result of the infinite input impedance of the op amp. We also note that VP is equal to VN and that's a result of uh, infinite gain due to the op amp. Now using these two equations we can find the relationship between VS and VO. So because there's no voltage drop across the source resistor, we can say that VP is equal to VS. But VP is equal to VN. And what is VN connected to? It's connected to VO. So the relationship is that VO is equal to Vs. In other words, the output voltage follows the input voltage, and that's why it's called a voltage power. Now, why is this also called a buffer? Because it isolates the source from the load, and what that means is that it doesn't matter what RS and RL values, what their their values are, we still have this relationship that VO is equal to Vs, despite the varying values of RS and RL. Again, this is called a buffer because we can use it in interface circuits to connect a load and the source. Okay, So using this voltage follower, again, its purpose is to isolate the source from the load. Now I said that RS and RL doesn't matter what the values are. Now without this buffer and we connect these two circuits together, this RL and this voltage source VS, with a series source resistance RS, when I start connecting them, it does matter what these values RS and RL is because when I supply VS, depending on the values of RS and RL, the output voltage across RL will vary depending on the values VS and RL. In other words, if I do just a simple voltage divider, VO, VO turns out to be RL over RS plus RL times VS and we see that the output and the input de depends on the value RL and RS in this example without the op amp. Whereas with, with the op amp, the voltage follower, we have VO is equal to VS. Now let us note that we can look at this relationship VO equal VS as a special case of a non-inverting op amp. So here our R3 is equal to zero and our R4 is really open or at infinite resistance. Now for a non-inverting op amp its gain is equal to one plus R3 over R4 shown in this circuit. Well when you substitute zero in here we see that we get 1 and that's the case. So the gain of the voltage follower has a gain of 1. So K amp for voltage follower has a gain of 1. Now let's look at a dilemma which is not really a dilemma but most people will see it as a dilemma but that's because we didn't draw our voltage supply current. We note that by Ohm's law the current delivered to the load is IO shown here and that IO is equal to VS divided by RL. 
Now we apply a KCL at the reference node. And our reference node is this ground point. At the reference node, we discover that IP is equal to IO. But IP is equal to 0, which implies that IO is equal to 0, which implies that VS is equal to 0. And it appears that the KCL is violated. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the dilemma is resolved by noting that the circuit diagram does not include the supply terminals and that the output current comes from the power supply and not from the input. And this dilemma arises only at the reference node, the ground terminal that is, and in op-amp circuits, as in all circuits, KCL must be satisfied. However, we must be alert to the fact that a KCL equation at the reference node could yield misleading results because the power supply terminals for the op-amp are not usually included in these circuit diagrams.